Let's start out by taking a look at some examples of how we can answer the question of who is responsible for the information I'm consuming. For this example, I'm looking for support materials for a research paper, and my research question is this. Would a vegan or plant-based diet be recommended for people who suffer from inflammation or inflammatory diseases? I've performed a search in Academic Search Complete and have some articles to consider for my paper. Let's start out by taking a look at this article I found from Vegetarian Time. Again, for this example, I'm considering the WHO evaluation criteria that focuses on authority. So, who is responsible for this article? Well, at the highest level, we should consider the source or the publisher of the information. In this case, the article is published in Vegetarian Times. We would want to consider how this affects the content being presented. Ask yourself, do you trust a publication like Vegetarian Times to present information about the benefits of vegan or plant-based diets? And also consider, would Vegetarian Times have anything to gain from readers adopting a plant-based diet, or would they have a particular bias to be aware of? Now keep in mind that even if you identify a source may have potential bias, that does not mean it's not a worthy source. Just keep in mind that you should be aware of this potential bias and address it when you incorporate the source into your research project. At the next level, we would want to take a look at the author or authors, if there are more than one. And in some cases, articles are presented without an author listed at all. But in this case, we do have an author listed. This article is written by Sharon Cohen. We want to determine this author's credentials and determine if she has the authority and credibility to address the specific topic. Let's go ahead and open up the full text of this article. The first thing that I notice about this article is that there are no credentials listed after the author's name. I can't assume that this author does not have any relevant degrees that would help with authority or credibility, but no information of this type is provided here. You may want to look at the entirety of the article to see if the information is listed anywhere else in the article. In this example, when I scroll to the end of the article, I see that there's an author note tucked in at the end of the article. This note states that Sharon Cohen is a Los Angeles-based writer and editor. I could do more research by Googling the author or perhaps looking for the author on LinkedIn. But based on this information alone, I can surmise that this author's area of expertise is writing and editing, not necessarily any expertise on inflammatory diseases. But we're not done there. If the author's credentials indicate that he or she is an authority in journalism, or writing, or editing, then I should consider that the author will in fact reach out to actual experts in the field and incorporate that information into the article. For example, in this article, the author includes quotes from a medical doctor who has written a book on diet and disease prevention, and another medical doctor who is a rheumatologist. If I look here, I'll see that here's a rheumatologist named Nathan Way. This article also refers to a more scholarly study undoubtedly written by experts. I should take a look at each of the people quoted in this article to determine their authority and credibility and it's also a good idea to track down the scholarly study discussed in the article. If I go ahead and perform a Google search for Dr. Nathan Way, who was quoted in the article, I unfortunately find that Dr. Way had passed away a couple years ago. However, I can read his obituary to determine that he was in fact considered an authority on arthritis, and I can conclude that the quotes attributed to him in the article do meet the authority criteria. Now this particular article is an example of a popular article. And as you can see, there's a little more work on your end to answer the who question and determine authority and credibility. Let's go ahead and take a look at a scholarly article on the same topic and apply the same evaluation criteria. Now this article is an example of a scholarly journal article titled Randomization to Plant-Based Dietary Approaches leads to a larger short-term improvements in dietary inflammatory index scores and macronutrient intake compared with diets that contain meat. So even just from the title, you can tell that this sounds a lot more scholarly than the, the article that we found out of Vegetarian Times. Now I can go ahead and start my evaluation for authority right here while I'm examining the full record in the database. 
The first thing I notice is that there are multiple authors listed, which is common for scholarly journal articles. There are also numbers after the author's name, indicating there are additional notes for these authors. If I scroll down the page, I'll see that these notes are referenced further down in the record under Author Affiliations. Here you will find the author's affiliations, which can be helpful when trying to locate more information about the individual authors. Now let's go ahead and open up the full text of the article. When you open up the full text of the article, you can see if additional credentials are provided about the authors. We discover that the same information is provided here that was provided in the database record with no additional credentials provided. However, if we go down to the end of the article, I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down to the end of the article. Sometimes the information is at the beginning or the end. But here I am at the end of the article, and I just wanted to point out that there's an additional, additional segment called Acknowledgement. This acknowledgement discusses the funding of the article. Although this holds no bearing for the WHO evaluation criteria, it does help with an evaluation criteria we will address later regarding conflict of interest or bias. Now, because no credentials were listed for the authors, I can use the information provided about the author's affiliations to locate more information about the authors. For example, if I perform a Google search for one of the authors, let's choose this first author here. If I do a Google search for Turney McGreevy and the Arnold School of Public Health, which is her affiliation, I can find more information about this author. When I performed that Google search, I was able to find a staff directory entry for the author that provides more information about the author, including links to other articles cited in Google Scholar the author's CV or resume, and also a really nice video featuring the author describing her research and teaching interests. I can then use this information to help me answer the question of authority. Does this author have the authority and credentials to be trusted with presenting research on the topic of plant-based diets and inflammatory diseases? In this case, my additional research revealed that the authors of the scholarly article do in fact have extensive credentials that are relevant to the research presented in the article. Therefore, I would consider this article as passing my WHO evaluation criteria. I would then plan to apply the rest of the criteria for each of the articles that I found to determine if they meet all of the evaluation criteria before incorporating these sources into my research project.